Baseball in the Boroughs, presented by Verizon. The Mets have dug themselves out of what once looked like a ditch that they would not be able to dig out of. Following the sweep of the Nationals, the team is two games over 500. They find themselves currently in playoff position as they are set to begin a weekend three-game series with the Rockies. Joining me to talk about the Mets is a host for ESPN Radio 98.7 here in New York. His name is Pat O'Keefe, and he joins me now. Pat, how's it going? Dexter, it's going well. Not, not as well for me as the Mets, but exciting times in Queens for sure. Yeah, no, exciting times, and I'm glad to connect with you. People know you from News 12, Sports Rush, uh, the Burroughs beat on MSG Varsity in the past, and we have connections through that, and now ESPN Radio. So good, good to reconnect. We have a little bit of a reconnection going on here. Glad long to, history. It's good to talk to you, yeah. A long history, so it's great to talk to you. All right, Pat, got to talk to you about this because the Mets, they've been on a remarkable run, sweeping the Nationals, getting back into playoff position. What do you think has been the most significant factor in their turnaround this season? I think clearly it's been the lineup. And if you looked at the path to success for the Mets at the beginning of the season with the pitching staff the way it was perceived to be at the time, you had to envision the lineup doing something uh, at least average, if not well above average. And that wasn't the case for the first month, month and a half of the season, which is when they fell into that hole. But, you know, if you go back to the line of demarcation, if you will, the three game, ugly three game sweep against the LA Dodgers, followed by the team only meeting, and that dropped it to 22 and 33. The lineup has played so much better, especially the guys you expected to be. Francisco Lindor in that time, a 305 batting average, 929 OPS since then. And then, of course, JD Martinez really emerging as the anchor in the middle of this lineup, seven homers. 27 RBIs and a 914 OPS. But this is a lineup, Dexter, that for the most part has established professional hitters with track records. And since that time during the turnaround, they have started to perform as such. Yeah, and that helps, right? You need your hitters to perform, especially the ones that you counted on. That helps a ton in terms of that turnaround. How much credit do you give manager Carlos Mendoza? How much credit do you think he deserves for the team's recent success? And what adjustments has he made that has been particularly effective in this stretch? Yeah, I think he deserves credit. I mean, because if you look at the entirety of the season, they have gone through not one but two lulls that could have been pretty ugly the 0 5 start when they were non-competitive you didn't really know where this team was heading and then they got on track shortly thereafter then they bottomed out again after that dodger series to fall to 11 games under 500 but since then uh 25 and 12 they've beaten the teams that they should beat they've beaten some good teams on top of that and i give the manager credit for things like going with the hot hand you know you have an established second baseman and jeff mcneil an all-star a former batting champion he's not playing well jose iglesias is batting 338 now historically is he a 338 hitter no but he is right now so mendoza's using that to his team's advantage yeah, he's used that, and it's used it well, playing the right guys when they need to be in the lineup. Pat, there's been some discussion, some debate about whether or not the Mets are worth investing in at the trade deadline. What's your take on this? And the recent minor moves that we've seen from the front office, is that any indication of how the organization may move at the deadline? I think it could be. But to answer your first question, yes, I think this is a team worth investing in. Look, we've got 18 days before the Major League Baseball trade deadline and the Mets in the number one market with the owner with the deepest pockets in baseball is in playoff position now. So that's a team worth investing in. But, you know, what do they need? Well, we just went through the lineup and I put the Mets lineup in terms of depth up, up against most lineups in Major League Baseball. I don't think they need a lot of help there. Um, obviously, the bullpen has been the Achilles heel of this team all season long. Uh, you definitely want to bring in at least two quality, reliable arms. Now, the good news is if you can get your closer on track, you don't need to bring in a high-priced closer. Those are the types of players that usually cost the most at the trade deadline. The Mets have that position covered if Diaz can be Edwin Diaz again. But a couple of reliable arms out of the bullpen, and even with Kodai Senga hopefully coming back and performing like he did last year, I do think another depth arm in the starting rotation would be very beneficial to this team. All right, so in terms of investing, is pitching, pitching, pitching in your eyes for the Mets. We'll see if they do that. As you said, trade deadline line coming up in 18 days looking at this three game series that the Mets have with the Rockies right before the All-Star break what will you be keeping your eye on with the Mets as they head towards the Midsummer Classic what are you watching with the Mets in the series against the Rockies 
another winnable series and the Mets have taken advantage of a long stretch of their schedule against winnable teams particularly in the National League but that's most of the National League this year who are the teams that have separated themselves you have the Phillies obviously the Dodgers maybe the Braves although they have their own injury issues so most nights when you take the field against another National League team that's a game that you could and in many cases should win these three games against the Rockies fall into that category. The Mets, since the 29th of May, have gone 16 and 7 against teams that currently have records under 500. So the way that you get back into a pennant race and the way that you stay in a pennant race is you consistently beat the teams that you are quote unquote supposed to beat. The Mets have done a very good job of that over the last month and a half. They need to continue that this weekend against the Rockies. Uh, and then, of course, they come out of the All-Star break with a four-game series in Miami against the Marlins. So that would hopefully just be a continuation of what they've done. Now hopefully that is the case, and they can continue to take care of business. We'll see with the New York Mets. As I said, they start a three-game set with the Rockies on Friday night before they head to the All-Star break. That is Pat O'Keefe. Catch him on ESPN Radio 98.7 FM. Pat, glad for the first time to connect with you here. We got to do this again, for sure. Anytime, Dexter. Always fun. Thanks, man.